It's amazing how many colors humans can perceive. Every color you can think of is a mixture of red, green, and blue light. That's because our eyes are photosensitive to only red, green, and blue light. Limited as that may sound, we can see more about the world around us than most mammals. Unlike, say, dogs, our eyes can separate red and green light. Our brains gauge the amount of red and green energy and mix it into a new perceived color. This square contains only red and green light. Here the amount of red increases from the right to the left and green increases upward. Notice that yellow is the color we think when our eyes detect a full equal amount of red and green, but there is no blue light present. There are two other combinations. They are green and blue, green increasing right to left, blue increasing upward. This combination mixes to create cyan. The other combination, red and blue, red increases to the right, blue increases upward, red and blue mix to create magenta. So far, we're just thinking of these combinations as flat two-dimensional images of two colors that increase along one-dimensional axes. Let's combine the one-dimensional red, green, and blue axes into three-dimensional axes. Turning on the 2D color combinations, we can see how they fit together. They form three walls, or faces, of a cube. Each wall is made by varying two colors and keeping the third color set at zero. Red and green increase, blue is zero. Green and blue increase, red is zero. Red and blue increase, and green is zero. The intersection point of the three faces is the place where the red, green, and blue all equal zero. The missing opposite corner of the cube is where red, green, and blue would all be 255. That's the maximum for 8-bit numbers. Drawing a diagonal from 000 to 255, 255, 255 creates a grayscale line from black to white. All of the red, green, and blue values equal each other at any point along this diagonal line. To complete the cube, we need three faces. For these faces, two colors will change, and one color will be equal to 255, the maximum. Red is maxed out at 255, green increases towards the right, blue increases upward, green is maxed at 255, red increases to the left, blue increases upward, blue is maxed at 255, red increases to the right, green increases upward. Did you notice that the opposite of the RGB axes are the CMY, cyan, magenta, and yellow axes. CMYK is a complementary color space to RGB. The K in CMYK is a measure of black pigment used to absorb RGB light evenly. There is one more color space the cube can give us insight about. We can approximate the HSL, or hue, saturation, and lightness color space. When the RGB cube is viewed directly into the grayscale diagonal, the resulting hexagon looks a lot like the color wheel used by artists. The hue, or what we think of as pure color, is mapped to the outside edge of the hexagon. Rotating around the center of this hexagon is like rotating around the color wheel. 
The grayscale line between black and white is like the lightness value in the HSL color space. Saturation indicates how far a color is from the center grayscale diagonal line. The further from the diagonal, the higher the saturation, and the more vivid the color is. Can you see how the color is most vivid at the edge of the hexagon? The color gradually fades towards white as you move to the center. I will slice the solid cube so we can see inside. The center is medium gray. So I wanted a quick an easy way of describing all of this to the non-technical people I know. I happen to see a video about artist Sam Gilliam. Influenced by the continuous colors of the color wheel, Mr. Gilliam developed a way of combining the discrete water-based acrylic paint into a continuous color field on unstretched canvas. That was what influenced me to not only make this video, but also this nested color cube set. There are four RGB cubes. The faces of the cubes are continuous color, but because they are nested, each cube has a specific discrete saturation level. If you would like to make a set of RGB cubes, a link to the PDF will be in the description below. I hope this has given you a new three-dimensional way to think about color. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.